Hey YouTubers, this is Murr171. Today I'm bringing you the next video in my line to find the best concealed carry weapon. This video is on the Smith & Wesson 642 Airlite. I'll zoom in for you. This is an alloy gun, just for those of you who are curious. So it is fairly lightweight. It is chambered in 38 special and is plus P rated. So you can fire plus P's out of it. So that's nice as well. Anyway, let's start with the video. How does it meet on our criteria? First off is concealability. How concealable is this gun? And I'm going to give this gun a 90 in concealability for two reasons. Number one, it's kind of fat pretty wide, it's got a cylinder in it, but it's still pretty small. Number two, it's not quite as small as some carry guns. This is my car P380. Notice it's slightly shorter, thinner, and not quite as long. So it, it got docked a couple of points for that, but that's alright. Next is reliability. Now where it's going to make up a little bit for having this fat cylinder in it, this five shot cylinder, is it's 100% reliable. Revolvers are known for being reliable. It's what they're for. So it's a reliable gun. I'm going to rate it at a full 100 points for that. Next on our criteria is does it have night capability? The standard 642 air weight does not. It's going to get zero points. In fact, the sights are fixed. There's not much you can do with that to modify it if you can't really aim this gun. And of course, at night, you can't use sights that you can't see. Now, they do make crimson trace laser grips and laser max lasers and etc. for this particular gun but I don't count lasers as night capability because they're battery based for one and number two they tend to cross the y-axis which only makes them accurate at a particular point on windage left to right right to left so I don't count lasers in my criteria but yes there are lasers available for those of you who are curious so it's going to get zero of the hundred night capability points because that's a that's pretty much an all or nothing. Very few exceptions to that. Now power. Where does the 38 special plus P rate on power? The 38 special plus P whoa rates out of a two inch short barrel at around 220 foot pounds of energy at the muzzle. Now that's a uh, the load data for a spear gold dot short barrel round short barrel gold dot round that's test fired at a two inch barrel generating 222 foot pounds of energy so that's not too much power in fact that's less power than I would personally consider to be uh, desirable in fact that's why the military actually moved away from 38 Special is, is that it lacked a lot of knockdown power and this is even less power than a lot or it's about the same amount of power that they had back pre-1911 so it, it's not very powerful it's gonna get docked a lot on power but that should help with its controllability countering the lightweight frame of the alloy frame and that so we're gonna put that at a 70 we're gonna give it 70 points out of a hundred for power. Next is bullet selection. Well, to be honest with you, if they make a bullet, they usually make it for the 38 Special as well. It's going to have outstanding bullet selection. Now, of course, you're not going to get the power rounds like you can with the 357. So it's not going to be much of a hunting gun. So it's going to lose some of the bullet selection on there. But you can do farm mitts with it. I mean, you can hunt some things. So we're going to put the bullet selection at a 95. 95 points. Ammo cost. It's still fairly 
cheap to shoot. It's it's not as bad as a lot of handgun rounds available. It's not as good as 9mm as far as cost goes. So they're going to dock it a few points on that and give it a 90. Now for versatility. This gun does not have much versatility. In fact, it's pretty much a defense gun. You would use it to defend yourself if you needed to. It's not going to be your great marksman weapon, though there are a few exceptions. Some people can shoot these pretty well, though most people have a hard time, especially since it's only double action. It, it's not going to have, it's just not going to have much versatility to it. So it's going to lose some points on that and get a 60. But now we're going to proceed with our grab and shoot test and that is where we grab the gun off the table and take a shot and we try to do that within two seconds. That's a second and a half of reaction time which is the average reaction time and half a second to aim and fire. That's most desirable. That's how we come up with the criteria. So let's see how it does with that. Okay, now, the speed grab and shoot test came out to 1.7 seconds, so that's going to be 100 points that we're going to grant it. It was under the two second mark, as desirable, and that's what we wanted. Now next, we're going to do the shooting controllability test. Now this is a test that is useful for a number of reasons, number one being what if the target doesn't go down on the first shot? Or if you have multiple targets, how fast can you get the gun back to position to fire again? And we're going to do this as in how many times can we shoot in five seconds? Now, the interesting thing to this is some people can use a speed loader much faster than I can. If I try to run a speed loader while I'm doing this test, I will not be able to do it in the five seconds. So I won't be running a speed loader. So this gun is already limited to five rounds. So let's see what it can do. I'm going to hit the timer and we will begin. Go. Okay, our shooting controllability test has shown that it has hit center mass three times and then one additional round up around the nine. Now, one could argue that the round up by the nine is a fatal blow. And yes, it most likely and probably is. But this test is designed around center mass. So we don't want to count anything that leaves center mass. And there are only three holes in center mass. And you can say, well, but. And I would say, once you leave center mass, you start dealing with things like transferable energy over penetration and just general power issues. So we don't count that. The test is designed, of course, to be 10 rounds for a grant and total of 100 points. This gun hit three rounds, that is 30 points. And that is going to bring us to our final criteria for finding the best concealed carry weapon, and that is value. In 642, air light. Ugh. Airlight, worth what you pay for it. This gun has an MSRP of about $459. Now I'm going to say it is a nice snub nose revolver. I'm a fan of Smith and Wesson revolvers, but this particular model is going to get docked a couple of points for value. First of all, it does not have the ability to have a tritium front post sight or tritium rear sights. Night sights are not an option for this gun. That is a problem 
for me, and I'm going to dock at some points for that, since most engagements, most hostile engagements occur in the evening or in the dark, at night. So, most people may have to actually hang their gun. Can't see your sights without night sights, or without light. Since it doesn't have a weight amount of flashlight to it, really, it's going to get docked a couple of points for not having the ability to have night sights, since the sights are fixed. Second, Smith & Wesson standard revolvers, non-performance series, non-pro series, tend to be a little rough nowadays. The old ones were, forgive me for saying this, super smooth. New ones, they're a little gritty. A lot of them need action jobs. This one has had a trigger and action job, and it is, helps a great deal for aiming, firing, controlling, etc. I want to say it's been moved down to a nine pound trigger and it is still a hundred percent reliable. They should issue them from the factory like this in my opinion. But they do not. So it's going to get docked a couple points on that. That's going to bring its value in my opinion to a 90. Smith & Wesson is a solid company. They're a good company. They come with good warranties and so, and they make a pretty fine product. So, just a little bit rough and not cheap. So, I would, I would certainly say that it's worth buying, but it needs a trigger job for sure. Anyway, that's going to bring us to our grand total. Our grand total for this particular gun, the 642 Aerolite, is. 725. That's a pretty good score. It's a good carrying score. These guns are certainly carryable. Before the big move to all the micro 380s, I actually carried one of these. I carried the 357 model. I wanted the extra power being out on the ranch where I may run into 300 pound wild hogs or something. So I like that extra power. Though 38 certainly is easier on the hand. So, anyway, this concludes the video on the Smith & Wesson 642. And I'm going to leave it at that. I will provide a breakdown as soon as the screen goes off. So thank you for watching and please subscribe. I'm going to keep these videos coming.